it's Dr. Sandra V. And I want to personally thank you for joining in to the Lift broadcast today. Come on and join me and let's lift up the name of our Lord. Let's exalt his word. Allow our hearts and minds to be lifted through practical Bible teaching, life coaching skills, prayer, and praise. Come on in now and join me and get lifted. Hi, it's Dr. Sandra V, and I want to welcome you to the Lift broadcast. I'm so glad that you chose to tune in today. I am looking forward to our time together as we rally around the Word of God. Got an awesome teaching for you today and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be dealing with what to do when your courage comes under fire. So join me in prayer and then we're going to go right to the word. Father, thank you so much for every child of God who is making a connection with this teaching on today. Father, we ask you to move by your spirit over the airways as the truth is going forward. Let someone be built up and strengthened, encouraged and edified. And Father, we, we promise to give you and you alone the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. So welcome on in and let's get to the word. I'm going to be teaching first off from 1 Peter chapter 5. And I just want to lay the foundation for the next couple of weeks of what we're going to be covering. So 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to begin at verse 6. And verse 6 says this, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So right out the gate, verse 6 is admonishing us that when something comes at our lives, when something comes that causes us to be overwhelmed or catches us off guard, something that's seemingly difficult, the first step to overcoming, the first step to getting through it and overcoming is to humble ourselves and admit that we need the help of the Lord. So he says if we will humble ourselves that the Lord will bring the exaltation in due time. All right. And then um, verse seven, I love it. It says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. That means you can, whatever is transpiring in our lives, beloved, we can just take it and we can cast it over on the Lord. There's nothing too great. There's nothing too small. The Lord is personally involved and interested in everything that's transpiring in each and every one of the lives of his children. So he says, bring all of the care, bring all of the concern, all of the anxiety, the worry, the fear, whatever you're experiencing. He says, bring it to him through prayer, cast it on him because he cares for us. You know, and that's one of the um, lies that the enemy tries to convince people about that God doesn't care, that God doesn't care what's happening to them. He doesn't care how long it's been happening to them. He doesn't care to the degree that it's happening to them. That is an untruth and we cannot buy into it. So verse 7 lets us know right out that we can bring every care and concern to him because he cares for us. And then verse 8, he admonishes us to be sober and to be vigilant. You know, I did a teaching once about the things that cause us to stagger in our faith and how worry and fear and concern and doubt and unbelief and disbelief and mistrust and distrust, all of these things intoxicate our faith and cause us to stagger in our faith walk. So here he's telling us be sober and be what vigilant being watchful so praying but also watching okay also being discerning it says because we have an adversary who goes about like a roaring lion now he's not a roaring lion but his movement and the way that he likes to prey on people uh, and and take advantage of circumstances and situations the way that he does that is like a, a lion when it has stooped 
meat and it's watching for its prey and it's calculating its prey and it's watching for that opportunity to pounce on its prey. So he says that the adversary is going about as a roaring lion and he's seeking whoever is available to be devoured, to be destroyed, to be utilized, to be manipulated. He's seeking to, de to devour. But verse 9 tells us we have to resist him steadfastly but we do it through faith beloved. And this is another tactic that we have to be aware of as children of God is our emotions. When our emotions emotions get out of control when our emotions get out of get out of check listen we can't stand in a place of faith and so that's why you know the enemy will work overtime to get us weary to wear us down to cause us to be fearful to get it get us in all different types of emotions so that we can't operate in faith and one thing you have to know is faith and, and fear they can't operate simultaneously one of them is going to dominate and fear is a huge one that he will use but verse 9 tells us we have to resist him steadfastly but we do it in a in a a faith stance. We take a stance of faith. And then it says knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in our brethren that are in the world. Another scripture tells us that there is nothing that has happened to us that is not common to man. And that there are others that are, are who have experienced or who are experiencing some of the things that may have arisen in your life. So he's saying know that these types of things are going on because anybody who lives by faith anybody who is um, endeavoring to walk upright to live in a way that's pleasing to the Lord in a world in a generation in a society that doesn't really want God doesn't really want the ways of God listen you're going to encounter some opposition you're going to encounter some difficulty you're going to encounter those types of things it's a part of the journey it's a part of the course and so when you know that then you learn how to posture yourself and know that God has the ability to bring you up and bring you out and bring you through anything that you may be facing verse 10 it says but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Watch this. It says, after that you have what? Suffered a while. Listen, we don't like that word suffer. Dr. Sandra doesn't like the word suffer. But did you know that Jesus said that those who suffer with him will also reign with him? In other words, if there's no cross, beloved, there's no crown. If there's no cross, there's no victory. If there's no trial, there's no victory. And so we have to understand that we come to know Christ on a deeper level through the things that we suffer. Those are the things that drive us closer to him. Those are the things that make us seek God. Those are the things that, that cause us to humble ourselves and get the mind of the Lord. And those are the things that also produce power and anointing in our life. So he says, after you have what? Suffered a while. Look at this. It says, God will come he, he will come by his power and make you perfect. This word perfect means mature. It doesn't mean flawless. It doesn't mean that we lo no longer make any mistakes, that our humanity never comes into play. It means he causes us to mature. And, and, and even though we do encounter things, even though we may have to suffer through some trials and tribulations, he matures us so that those things don't break us down. They don't drive us over the edge. We know where our help comes from. We know how to go to God and get a prayer through. We know how to go to God and cast those cares on him and trust him with what we place, you know, at his feet and know that he's going to bring us out and he's going to deliver. So he says, after you have suffered a while, God makes you mature. Watch this. Watch this. I love it. Because you, you can see the succession and you can see the progression and you can see a process here. He says, after you have suffered a while, he says, God will make you mature. He comes by his power, his strength, that experience that you gain. He, he causes it to, to, to cause you to mature mature but watch this it says and then he will come and establish he will establish he will strengthen and then he will settle I love it after you suffered you gotta know maturity comes 
after the suffering and in the suffering and after the suffering then God you know once he matures you then he comes and establishes you or re-establishes you listen I want to share this this is something that I learned from walking with the Lord is that there are two sides to God and you know we love the side where God is building and God is strengthening and God is edifying and God is encouraging and he's blessing and he's pouring out on us but we don't all always favor the side of God where he has to tear down and demolish things and and dismantle things now let me let me make this clear many times when you're going through something it's difficult to tell if it's divine if the source of it is divine or the source of it is demonic because it can look very close, especially when you're in a season that nothing's going your way, when you're in a season where you plant it, plant it, plant it, and it looks like nothing's growing, when it looks like your life is dry, your life is barren, you're not producing fruit, and you're struggling. That doesn't look like God. It doesn't look like the God we want to identify with, that he would allow someone that he loves to experience those types of pain and agony and trial and hardship well there's two sides to God you know so you have to understand many of us when we came to the Lord we were broken we were bruised we were battered we were twisted we were distorted our thinking was off you know our value system was off our level of understanding was way off our thoughts didn't line up with God's thoughts in any way and so oftentimes when we come to him he has to uh, do some demolition in our life beloved which means he has to break up some fallow ground he has to break up some areas in our life that don't line up with him that don't agree with his teaching that don't arise to his standard that you know our thoughts and our value system don't line up so God has to allow things in our life to break that down but but I want you to know that after he does that and he clears that out of our life then he will come again and he will reestablish he'll establish us in on a solid foundation ooh on a foundation of truth on a foundation of unconditional love on a foundation of righteousness and holiness and things that are healthy because everybody that came to the lord wasn't healthy you know in one area or another we may have come out of all types of dysfunctions when I came to the Lord I was a wreck I was a mess and you know he had to disestablish that old life and and give me a whole new life because I had become a whole new creature so that's actually good news but I love what the scripture is saying he is go after you have suffered a while he will make you mature he will then establish look at and then he comes and strengthens it's amazing how uh, the book of Job talks about how God kills and he makes alive how he wounds and then he heals you know there are those two sides of God all right so uh, he says and then it's, he will settle you things will begin to settle things will begin to even out things will begin to pan out it will begin to make more sense to you at that point so now I'm gonna go over to James chapter 4 because James chapter 4 reiterates some of what uh, Peter first Peter was saying to us so James chapter 4 and I'm gonna pick up at verse 6 it says but he gives more grace Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. I want to add something here is this. You know, sometimes when you're under pressure, you know, that the pressures of life, they can actually serve us for good. Now, they don't feel good, but they can serve us for good because what they do is they bring up what's impure in us. Anything that's impure, then that pressure is going to cause that to rise up. And God wants that to rise up so that we can be purged of it. Now, what happens a lot of times when we're under pressure, we're in pain, we're 
we're agonizing, you know, we're wrestling and we're dealing with things and, you know, we're feeling overwhelmed or whatever in our emotions, you know, sometimes we can get in a place where we are now, you know, becoming um, angry. These are, and mind you, these are health, this is a healthy emotion. Anger is a healthy emotion as long as we don't sin when we get angry. But sometimes we can get angry, we can become prideful, we can become um, stiff-necked or not pliable to what God is trying to do. We're resistant. And so when we do that, when we get in a place of pride and we're still trying to have our own way, when we can see that God is, is bringing a change, the pot, we're on the potter's wheel and he's uh, making him again another vessel and he's allowing some brokenness and he's allowing, you know, some, some bruising and some marring and things like that. It doesn't feel good. And God knows it doesn't feel good. Our flesh does not want that. Our natural man does not want that. But And so we can get in a place of pride and not wanting to comply. And we're fighting and we're bucking and we're wrestling against the process. Listen, it says when we do that, he resists the proud, which means it will cause the spirit of the Lord to pull back from us. But it said, but he gives grace to the humble. So just as Peter told us, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Why does he say, why does he say that? Why does he say under the mighty hand of God? Because it's indicative of the fact that God is dealing with us. He's dealing with the dealings of God. And see, a lot of times we don't like that when God put his hand on us, the dealings of God. Or we like the blessing. We like the blessing, but we don't like the dealings of God. And so many times when he's dealing with us, it doesn't feel good. But you know, he's coming for a people that don't have a spot or a wrinkle, beloved. So if there's no spot or wrinkle when he comes back, that means we've been through the ringer. We've been washed. We've been through the ringer. We've been through the fire because the heat is what gets out the wrinkles. Oh my goodness. So he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. All right, and he will exalt in due time. Over here, James is saying, he resists the proud. So he will pull, he will, he will recede. His, his presence will recede from us. You know, and one thing you got to know about God, God has nothing but time. And I tell people all the time, God will wait you out. He'll wait until we can come to the nevertheless, not my will, but your will. My, 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 my. So it says he resists the proud, but what does he do? When we humble ourselves, then he graces us and his grace is sufficient. So he graces us. He gives grace to the humble. He gives unmerited favor. And then verse 7 he, in, in James 4 and 7, he says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Watch this. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, sometimes we're trying to resist our adversary that Peter told us about. He said we have an adversary that as a roaring lion goes about looking and seeking somebody to devour. Over here, the scripture tells us to resist the devil. But you know, the, the prerequisite to having the ability to resist the devil is to humble yourself first and and um, and to um, submit yourself to submit yourself unto the Lord see anytime we submit ourselves let me help somebody anytime we submit ourselves unto the Lord we submit ourselves unto the ways of the Lord the will of the Lord and whatever process he has us in whatever season he has us in beloved he's responsible for the outcome and not us Woo! That's powerful. He's responsible for the outcome. But if we're the one trying to handle it and, you know, we're trying to keep the helm and keep the reins, then guess what? We're responsible for the outcome. So it's better to humble yourself and submit yourself to the Lord. You know, and God takes on the responsibility for the outcome of that situation. All right? But it says once we, once we submit ourselves to the Lord, once we humble ourselves, we admit that we need his help. We submit ourselves and, you know, surrender. God, I want your will. Lord, I want your mind. Father, I'm asking for your counsel. I've been trying to do it my way and 
and it's not working. You know, I've gotten so far at doing it my way, but I've come to a dead end. You know, whatever the situation is. And so it says, you know, submit yourself to him. Look at this. It says, and then you will have the ability, in other words, to resist the devil and he will flee. Because watch this. Satan has centuries and centuries and centuries of experience. At, at fooling and deceiving and tricking and manipulating and using mankind's weakness. And so, you, you know, if you think that you were born, you know, 20 years ago, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, 80 years ago, and you're going to be the one that's going to resist him in your own strength and power, I wish you the best. But, you know, records show that man needs God. To deal with this entity and so it says resist the devil and he will flee so if we when it when he comes and we have humbled ourselves and we have submitted ourselves unto the Lord when he comes and he finds resistance on every hand the Bible says he will flee because he'll come in all kinds of ways beloved he'll come through the family he'll come through the finances he'll try to attack your thoughts he'll try to attack you know um, you know whatever it is that's in important to you he'll come in all kinds of ways to he'll try to work through a person's health he does all kind he's got all kinds of schemes but if he finds resistance in every way that he comes the Bible says that he will what flee then look at verse 9 this is the key too it says draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you so if we want the Lord to be near and dear, we want his, and I'm talking about his tangible presence. We know God is omnipresent. We know he's everywhere at the same time because he's the God of the universe. He's the God who created the heaven and earth. He created the universe. So he's everywhere. He's omnipresent, yes, but I'm talking about his tangible presence. When you can sense his presence, when he allows his spirit to rest on you or rest in your home or rest in a place, then that's what we're talking about, his tangible presence all right so it says if you if we want to hit God's tangible presence then it's letting us know draw nigh to him and when he draws nigh when we draw nigh to him that he will allow his presence to come nigh unto us beloved and then look at this it says cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double-minded be afflicted and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. This is talking about a posture. It's talking about coming before the Lord, prostrate, you know, uh, prostrate, not, you know, not haughty, not, you know, um, lifted up and puffed up and not coming with a disposition of you know what we what we deserve and all of that but humbling ourselves before before the Lord acknowledging and recognizing that he's greater than us you know acknowledging and recognizing that his wisdom is superior his power is superior to us and so that's what it's talking about it's talking about taking on a posture of lamentation being penitent you know if we've sinned if we've come short of the glory not coming in justifying ourselves but coming in asking for forgiveness so that we can receive forgiveness because see the Bible tells us if anything that we cover over we can't receive forgiveness for but if we'll come and we'll bear all if we'll come and we'll cast it upon him then he will move upon it and he will deal with us accordingly beloved so it's telling us you know purify our hearts and uh, verse 10 again he tells us humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up so this reiterates what first Peter told us humble ourselves under the dealings of God and God will exalt in due season and here James is telling us to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift us up so I don't know who I'm talking to today that you know you've heard this word and I trust that it has been a blessing to you um, I trust that it has informed you in some way you may be uh, dealing with something that is more than you can handle and I want to admonish you that 
God cares and that you can bring the care, bring the concern, bring whatever it is that you're dealing with and you can place it in the presence of the Lord. And if you will humble yourself and give it over to God, I'm telling you, beloved, he will pick up your cause. He will take up your cause. He will hear your prayer. He will hear your cry and he will respond in your behalf because of your humility. And so listen, we're talking about courage under fire and I hope that you'll come back for the next broadcast. In the meantime, I want to close out in prayer and I want to also invite you to partner with the Lift broadcast that we can continue sharing the word here on HSBN TV. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the word that has come forth to admonish us, Lord, that you are personally involved and interested in everything going on in our lives, that we can cast all our cares on you because you care for us, that if we humble ourselves when you are dealing with us, Father, that you you will do the lifting, you will do the exalting, and you will give us the grace that we need to walk through and to overcome any circumstance or any situation. Bless every person that has come in contact with this broadcast, Father. You know what they need, and we thank you for supplying it according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed being here with you. I hope that you'll follow me over to the next show because we're going to pick up talking some more about what to do when your courage is under fire. Let us hear from you at SandraVMinistries.org. You can sow your seed there. You can also leave your prayer request. And we look forward to making a connection with you real soon. See you over in the next show. Hey there, it's Coach Sandra B. Listen, I wanted to reach out to you because I believe that there may be someone watching this video who you are feeling the need to be heard. I'm an active listener, and as your life coach, I will provide a safe, non-threatening, non-judgmental, sacred space for you to come and share your feelings and share your thoughts. And then from there, we can put together a doable, achievable plan so that we can get you progressing in the right direction according to the life you really want to live. I'm looking forward to working with you. Give me a call and let's get coaching. Saints, now is the time for believers to step up and engage your faith in a bold way. Kingdom Faith Apparel brings you premium shirts, headwear, and accessories displaying God's Word to engage believers and non-believers. Short, simple, and easy-to-read messages with inspirational slogans and motivational scriptures. We hope you'll find your inspiration in the many offerings presented on our website. Visit us today at www.kingdomfaithapparel.com. Peace and blessings. Thank you for tuning into the Live Broadcast. Join our vision partners and be connected as Dr. Sandra V shares the gospel around the globe. Get today on the website at sandravministries.org or mail into P.O. Box 847, Pomona, California, 91769. Browse our online store and continue to get lifted with essential teachings, products, services, and upcoming events.